Hello, I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, your guide through the ARRL license manuals. The videos in this course follow the manuals section for section. You can get the ARRL license manuals from the source listed below the video. After you watch the video, dig into the corresponding section of the book, study the associated questions, and then come back for the next video. Now the antenna is the thing that converts the RF energy in your radio into radio waves. And it does the reverse. It converts the radio waves into a very, very tiny signal that your radio can amplify and then that you can listen to. Now it's very important to understand that there's basically one fundamental kind of an antenna and that's a dipole. A dipole is a piece of wire or whatever uh, that is a half of a wavelength long. So in 80 meters it's 40 meters long or 120 feet. On 40 meters it's uh, uh, 20 meters long, it's about 66 feet. And uh, that's, there are various ways of coupling your RF into that antenna. But the thing about a dipole is that all the other antennas are kind of built upon it. For example, a beam, you take the dipole and you start adding other elements to it. Or for a parabolic antenna, you'll have the little dipole which comes up into a feed horn and then the parabola behind it. Uh, they all come back down to that little old-fashioned dipole. And in fact, on most amateur radio frequencies, certainly in HF, and even in VHF, uh, a dipole is a fine antenna and works very well, very easy uh, to put up. They can be made of, of wire or quite a variety of things. Uh, I have even made two meter antennas out of coat hangers. Remember, two meters, one meter, or three feet is the length of the half wave dipole. Now, it's possible to have an antenna, and I'm going to show you one like this because it, it goes up on top of the car. Uh, what you're looking at is a dipole, even though it doesn't look like it. There's a quarter wave above the top of the car, but the rest of the car acts as a ground plane and reflects, just like light would reflect, the other half of that antenna. So you've got the real quarter wave and the virtual quarter wave. It still adds to a half wave. Very important thing. If the wire in your antenna is vertically polarized, by a definition we say that your signal is vertically polarized. Again, like this, horizontal, horizontal polarization. Almost all FM work in the bands that you will use, 2 meters, 440, and everything else, is vertically polarized. HF can be either vertically or horizontally polarized. If you happen to be very close to each other, a horizontally polarized signal, you won't hear it in the vertical and, and so on. It's just like Polaroid sunglasses. You kind of turn them sideways like this to see uh, which way you can see best. So, there you are. That's uh, what we have to do with antennas. Now, you look in here about radiation patterns. The key thing to remember is we're not adding energy. We're just focusing the energy. Sort of like a flashlight has a reflector, focuses the energy. It's real bright out in front, not bright back, in the back. And the other thing to remember is that most antennas are reciprocal. If they uh, send their energy out in one direction, that's the direction they like to receive it from. That's a very handy thing to, to count on. The book talks about decibels. Decibels are a way of turning multiplying into adding. And there's formulas and all that. We really don't need to worry about them at the technician level. There are two rules of thumb that will get you by all of the test questions that you have on decibels. And I might add that when you encounter decibels out in the real world, these two rules of thumb come in very, very handy. Like I said, turning multiplying into adding. So multiplying by two is the same as adding 3 dB. So if we multiply, if we have an amplifier, for example, that multiplies the signal from 2 watts to 4 watts, that's doubling, okay? That's the same as adding 3 dB. If you have an attenuator that divides by 2, you've got 8 watts in, 4 watts out, that's the same as subtracting 3 dB. Now th this can be done in order. Let's multiply by 2 and then multiply by 2 again. So 2 becomes 4 becomes 8. Okay, that's the same as adding 3 dB twice, or 6 dB, okay? Multiplying by 10 is the same as adding 10. Dividing by 10 is the same as subtracting 10 dB.
Let's look at the questions that we've got here. Uh, the first one, what is the approximate amount of change measured in decibels of a power increase from 5 to 10 watts? Well, it's doubling, so it's 3 dB. What is the approximate amount of change measured in decibels of a power decrease from 12 watts to 3 watts? Well, we divide it in half twice. From 12 to 6, that's minus 3 dB, and from 6 to 3, that's another minus 3 dB, so the total number there is minus 6, minus 6 dB. And what is the amount of change measured in decibels of a power increase from 20 watts to 200 watts? Well, that's a factor of 10, so that's 10 dB just like that. And that's all you need to know about decibels for the technician. When we come back around for the general class, we'll go a couple levels deeper, but for now, that'll do. Thanks for following along with the videos and the book. After you've studied this section in the manual and are satisfied you understand the questions and their answers, come back here for the next video. The ARRL is the National Association for Amateur Radio, and I urge you to join, even if you don't have your license yet. That way you get QST, the League's monthly magazine full of articles for beginners and veterans alike, or you can choose On The Air, a magazine designed specifically for those new to amateur radio. Until we next meet, 73.